What should we expect from Gwent the Witcher card game? This is Kiwi the Oblivion and we got we received two trailers. A cinematic story well not story but a cinematic trailer and then a gameplay trailer and stuff like that. And the gameplay trailer is where all this good stuff happened, but we got to see some good quality um artwork and action from the cinematic trailer. So I wanna talk about what we should expect from the from Gwent. But I should say I'm really late on this because there was a closed beta and I didn't get my hands on it. So I'm sure people know how to play Gwent really, really good. I'm really good at playing the Witcher 3 version of Gwent. And I'm going to talk about how different Gwent the Witcher card game standalone game by itself is. And it's really different. If you didn't follow the people who played the old closed beta and if you didn't follow... um like it all through like I didn't so this open beta is your first time getting into it then you probably will get wrecked by anyone who played the closed beta but then again um there's matchmaking perfectly included because like there's levels and stuff like that but I'll get into that when we get to the um gameplay trailer and people were talking about this trailer that is not series voice and it's not, but um, for some reason in the actual beta, open beta, her voice is there and Geralt's voice is fine. Geralt's voice is also fine in this cinematic trailer. So anyway, we're moving over to the uh, gameplay trailer and they mentioned so much in this gameplay trailer. And there's one thing I really want to get into, but um, let's go. Let's talk about what I've experienced so far in the open beta. Um, it's more, it's a more in-depth version of the card game found in Witcher 3. So there's like crazy stuff with it. And the improvements I've noticed was, okay, so some of the cards are animated. I actually thought all the cards would be animated. So basically, it seems like the leader cards, they came back, they're animated. And then I guess some of the gold cards are animated and stuff like that. So there's good animations. And one of the major things that's different is your cards can attack the other cards um, bringing down their level. That's crazy. When I found out, I was like, yo, this is so much more in depth, in depth just because of that fact alone. And then there's other things. Weather is back. And unlike Frost, which only does the first roll, Fog, second roll, and Torrential Rain's third roll, you could choose where you want to place those. Um, Clear Skies is back also, and this the cards do so much different stuff. And then you get you could get potions to boost the attack power of your cards, and well, not attack power, um, to boost the number of your card that corresponds to your the strength of your card basically. Because um, that number that you see there is not how much the card would attack for. It's a special ability that tells you like how much the card would attack for. So like attack a card for three of its thing. And it lowers the card that you attack number by that much. And then it also affects the total amount of number um, that the person has. And it's way more in depth and it feels so like a real card game. Of course, Gwent in The Witcher 3 was really hard, um, especially when you got to the tournament area. But um, here it's crazy. I actually won my first online match. Um, and that was great, but I did some challenges and stuff like that. But anyway, let's talk. Story mode was announced. There's gonna be a campaign, guys. For a card game, there's gonna be a campaign. And we see segments of Geralt, um, walking around. I think it showed that already. I don't know if they showed that yet, um, in this video. Um, uh, you'll see it when you see it, if you already saw it. Yeah, you see segments of Geralt walking around. I guess you could find cards in the overworld or whatever world that's gonna be and you probably unlock chests and stuff like that and we all know this dude and he gives us cards and stuff like that so we finally get to face real people so that's what the matchmaking and 
online mode is all about. If y'all saw that card right there, rewind a little few seconds, and that's actually um, Roach. He's glitched out on the house, and it's crazy that they put some of that stuff. And I think this is where they're talking about this, the story mode. You don't get any glimpse of... Look at this. Oh my gosh. Yo, guys, this is gonna be crazy. A story mode? Really? Um, We don't get any glimpse of this in the open beta, and apparently this game is free to play. But there's a lot of um, paid stuff in the game that you could do. You could also get them in the game. It may take a lot longer, but the full game is set to be free to play. So I'm looking forward to the full game. And guys, what I'm thinking is that it's going to be like, um, you know how The Witcher 2015, Witcher 3 got Game of the Year. And then in 2016, or was it 2017, one of those years, Blood and Wine DLC got the award for best RPG and that was a DLC guys. So what are we gonna see with this card game? Imagine if this this game gets an award. Imagine that. Because CDPR, CD Project Red, they're really good at making games, my dude. And that's what I want to talk about. This is everything so far that I know from these two trailers. Leave a like, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll try to follow this as much as I can because I do follow Witcher 3 and Witcher stuff, content and stuff like that. So thanks for watching.